And coming up at 11, some big names in country music are helping out with flood relief. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening to you. I'm Dakota Makris. Thank you for joining us tonight. Chris Stapleton, Tyler Childers, and Dwight Yoakam are three of Eastern Kentucky's biggest names in country music, and their talents will be on stage raising money for flood relief. Samantha Valentino has details about the concert coming to Rupp Arena next month. Rupp has been an institution in the community for a long time, and it's just time to give back. More than a month ago, historic flooding devastated eastern Kentucky. People are still working to clean up the damage the floods left behind and rebuild their homes. Help from across the country has made its way to the region, and now three eastern Kentucky musicians are taking the Rupp Arena stage to raise money for their community. When something hits this close to home, we knew we wanted to join up with some hometown fellows and provide a concert and an event that people will want to go to for a good cause. Tyler Childers, Chris Stapleton, and Dwight Yoakum are joining forces at Rupp Arena on October 11th. You'll have three great acts, all of the concessions, all of the merch. 100% of net proceeds from the concert will benefit the Kentucky Rising Fund to support flood relief work and recovery efforts in eastern Kentucky. The guys said we want to do something, so they came to us and said, what can we do to host something? And we just felt like the most natural fit, so we're so excited to have them here. Marketing director at Rupp Arena, Stephanie Bork, says the response to the concert's announcement has already been amazing. People have been showing so much love and support in the comments, saying they're ready to buy, they're ready to come. Even though it's a month out, people are setting other things aside because they realize people are going through a terrible time and they want to help in any way possible. Tickets to Kentucky Rising, a benefit concert for flood relief and recovery, go on sale Friday, September 16th. Well, a pleasant evening in the mountains tonight, and we will continue to see that as we head through the remainder of the overnight and into tomorrow as well. A look at temperatures around the region right now. Plenty of middle 50s already in the area, and we'll continue to see things drop as we head into tonight. It's a clean sweep on Pinpoint Doppler. That's just some low-level moisture being picked up. There's nothing in terms of any kind of rainfall that we'd have to worry about. Satellite and radar in motion. Even the clouds and showers to our north have diminished as the night's gone on. That's thanks to low pressure up around the Great Lakes. So we are still not quite done with the clouds, but for the most part, we're calm. Low to mid-50s out there tonight. Calm winds with, again, just some of that patchy fog. Details on just how nice the weather looks to stay coming up in just a few minutes. Dakota. All right, Evan, thank you. Well, the flood forced thousands to relocate because their homes were destroyed. Some survivors are staying at Mine Made Adventure Park and campers set up as temporary housing. The park gives a nice outdoor view for victims, but memories from the flood still come back. Flood survivor Melinda Brewer says their house was unstable. We thought we were leaving. We got up, checked around, and we were surrounded. He had never got behind the house, never. And then, like I said, I was standing there for a few minutes and I thought my anxiety was just getting the better of me and the floor was bouncing with me. Brewer said they are looking for permanent housing now, but they still need more supplies. And Hunter Combs is a soon to be junior at Knott County Central High School. Combs has been helping with cleanup since the flood around different schools in Knott County, hoping to remind teachers and others that, well, there's still hope. He wrote an article explaining his experience through his eyes. How do I tell the story of what I went through, what some people went through, but not kind of like spread that out a little bit to where, you know, I'll understand it because I was affected severely by the flooding and people who don't live here and were affected by the flooding would also understand it. Well, Combs says he gives a lot of credit to his teachers for all they have done and he is excited to go back to school soon. Not County students go back to school Monday, September 19th. Well, several Wayne County, West Virginia students are recovering after their school bus crashed into a power pole this morning. Six of them had to be taken to a hospital. It happened along Mill Creek Road in Fort Gay. The crash left part of the area without power, which forced officials to close Fort Gay pre-K through eighth grade schools. Lisa Feinstein reports. A ride to school took a scary turn when a Wayne County school bus carrying 40 students crashed into a power pole. Superintendent Todd Alexander says six students were taken to the hospital, 
but are expected to be okay. Well, the first thing is the safety, uh, the safety of the students and the, and the safety of the driver. And uh, unfortunately, in, in this situation, we do believe that there's been some injuries. I don't think that there's been any serious injuries, but we do have some uh, kids that are being checked out medically. The crash didn't just impact the children on the bus. It knocked out power to two schools. And of course, with the power being out in the schools, we had uh, Fort Gay pre-K through 8. We had, it shut, we had to shut it down at 8.30 this morning. Other school buses had to come in to pick the students up while law enforcement worked to call families. Now they're working to figure out what caused the crash. I think that there were some reports that uh, there might have been uh, might have been a, a deer scene, but again, all that's all that's preliminary. We don't know exactly what happened. We'll wait for the investigation results. Alexander says the district will follow an investigation process outlined by the state to determine any next steps. Well, officials do not believe any of the injuries from the crash are life threatening. Mill Creek Road had to be closed off for the morning as crews worked to move the bus. A body found in Lee County has now been identified. Well, we first told you about this last week. Kentucky State Police say the body of 52 year old Tamika L. McDaniel from Beattyville was found inside a burned building on Kentucky 52 West. Her body was found back on September 7th. Right now, her cause of death has not been released, and KSP says the investigation is ongoing. Anyone with information is asked to call Kentucky State Police at the number you see on your screen. Business leaders from across the region and state officials gathered at the Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce meeting earlier today. Kentucky Commissioner of Agriculture Ryan Quarles was a guest speaker at the Chamber of Commerce meeting, sharing the importance of supporting local farmers and the products they sell. And so our number one message is that if possible, support local. Our Kentucky Proud program and Appalachia Proud program do just that. And so we want to remind folks, whether they, they grew up on a farm or not, that agriculture matters. And it's also an area where we need more Kentuckians to choose agriculture as a career. During the meeting, Coral said many Kentucky farmers have been impacted by the flood, which has affected Kentucky agriculture as a whole. If your farm was impacted by flooding, you can contact the commissioner's office. September is Thyroid Cancer Awareness Month, and it holds a special meaning for a staff member here at WYMT. Sports anchor Courtney Lane Brewer was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in 2015. She had a three by four inch tumor on her thyroid and underwent extensive radiation in 2017. Her scans were clear. Now she is hosting a benefit called Can Cocktails for Cancer, raising money for cancer research and flood relief. We'll have signature cocktails. We'll have a silent auction with all of these amazing vendors from all over Eastern Kentucky. It'll just be a night for people to get together, get a little dressed up. And what I've been saying is raise money and raise spirits because this has been such a difficult time. Money raised will be split between the Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association and to Appalachia Rises for flood relief efforts. The event kicks off Thursday, September 22nd at 7 o'clock at the Art Station in downtown Hazard. Tickets are $20 each. Saying goodbye to the Queen, I'm Danya Backus with a look at today's tributes and ceremonies to Queen Elizabeth II. Plus, our summer-like pattern continues now, but things look much better as we head toward the second half of the week. Latest breakdown.